The Red Skelton Show, brought to you by Tide. Procter & Gamble's amazing new discovery for your whole family wash. Tide's in. Dirt's out. Tide gets clothes cleaner than any soap. Any soap? Yes, any soap. Tide gets clothes cleaner than any soap. T-I-D-E. Tide. From Hollywood, Procter & Gamble bring you the Red Skelton Show with Dave Rose and his orchestra, our singing stars, the Four Knights, Verna Felton, Lorene Tettle, Pat McGeehan, and yours, Julie Rod O'Connor. And now, from metro Golden mayor the star of our show, Red Skelton. Thank you very much, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are you, Rod? I'm cold. <laughs> Boy, what happened to our California weather? I think it went to Alaska for the winter. <laughs> no, but we shouldn't talk about the California weather. The, uh, that's what it says. W-E-T-E-R weather. <laughs> hey, call Mimeograph Department and tell them this is the worst spell of weather we've had in a long time. <laughs> but we shouldn't talk about the California weather. The Chamber of Commerce says it will hurt the tourist trade. Well, you know, last year they claimed that the smog kept people away, but yeah. uh, I've been reading where Los Angeles is planning to get rid of the smog in 1949. They're going to move the city to Pittsburgh. What are they going to do? Move it to Pittsburgh? Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> what a thief. What a thief that guy is. <laughs> hey, you know, everybody out here is getting used to the smog now. Used to walk up the street and say, how are you? Now they say, where are you? <laughs> my neighborhood, they won't, you won't, you're not even allowed to smoke a cigarette unless you inhale. <laughs> Look, I almost choked to death looking for a gopher hole to blow my breath in. Uh, speaking of gophers, do you know Sam Gopher? Sam, you know, who is he? Somebody in the underworld? <laughs> no, he's an income tax consultant. Oh. You know, next week is the deadline for reconciling your 1948 income tax. Yeah. Uh, don't you employ a certified public accountant to figure I your did, tax? I did, but when he got through, he went out and got certified again. <laughs> Hey, wouldn't it be nice if he'd skip the taxes just one year, huh? Yeah. You know the old saying, though, two things are certain, death and taxes. Yeah, but tax don't get... Uh, death... <laughs> death don't get worse every time Harry delivers an address to Congress. $30 billion he's asking for. Mm. Boy, they, that... You know what that may mean? No. The government might have to borrow a loan from Crosby or uh, Jolson. <laughs> Or maybe Jack Benny. <laughs> what the hell? Did you get your income tax blank yet? Oh, wait, I'll tell you in a minute. Yeah, I got it, I got it. <laughs> yeah, and they mean business this year. On the first page, there's a picture of J. Edgar Hoover standing at the gate of Alcatraz, and big print, it says, Just you try. <laughs> well, uh, don't forget this year you can take off an extra $100 for each of your children. Mm hmm. They're eating this year, too, you know. <laughs> Kidding aside, in spite of high taxes, we're better off than a lot of countries think we are. Yeah, did you see when the Russian newspaper said the food shortage in America is so bad that all of us are eating horse meat? They're jealous, huh? <laughs> <laughs> they probably got the idea that we're eating horse meat because one of Joe's boys overheard a guy out at Santa Anita say, I'm starving for a winter. <laughs> Say, Santa Anita racetrack is open again. Yeah, hey, do you, you, you ever take the shortcut over to Santa Anita? Yeah. We well, have to go buy a laundry over there. They got a big sign up in the window that says, If you haven't lost your shirt at Santa Anita, we'd like to wash and iron it for you. <laughs> Uh, by the way, have you uh, noticed the bridegroom over there? He just, <laughs> Dave Rose got married, you know. Really? Where did it happen? Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. One in a crap game, huh? <laughs> <laughs> hey, David's been daydreaming ever since he married uh, uh, Betty Bigelow. <laughs> I walk up to him, I say, hello, and he says, I do. <laughs> well, uh, hiya, David. Congratulations. Congratulations. Do you feel okay? I do. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a very lucky young man, you know, yeah. old man, young man. <laughs> there you are. You give him an after card and the ad lib on you every time. <laughs> Say, Red, Betty and I want to thank you very much for the wedding present. Oh, think nothing of it. We don't. <laughs> but I thought we'd thank you anyway. Yeah, well, what do you mean? You thought uh, I thought it's what you wanted. You heard you mention that you didn't have any silver, and that's why I sent you that roll of dimes. <laughs> Sorry I said that. 
<laughs> By the way, David, how do the musicians feel that you get married so sudden like that? Oh, it won't change anything with them. No? We're all still pals. <laughs> In fact, tonight they've invited me to an all-night poker party to celebrate. Has your wife heard about this yet? Not yet. <laughs> He'll never know what hit him. <laughs> Well, David, there's a big change coming in your life. Today, you're a bridegroom, but after you tell your wife about this poker party, you're going to be a married man. <laughs> you, mean just, you mean just because I'm married, you think my wife will object to my going on an all-night poker party with the boys? <laughs> There's the telephone. We're about to stop the music, right? <laughs> okay, give me the phone. I'll Here show you. you. This boy's a natural-born sport. <laughs> Hello, Betty, little lover. <laughs> Proposed by phone, I'll tell you that. Uh, this is your David. David. I won't be home tonight, Betty. The boys are having a late poker party. What? Sure I will. I knew you would. Goodbye, sweetheart. She says okay as long as I don't raise on two pair. <laughs> Wash up and get your check. You're through. <laughs> Brother, I said congratulations before, but I, you, I didn't put enough feeling into it. Congratulations, David. Well, David, I think I'll join you and the fellas. I'm not doing anything tonight. Well, you can count me in, too. Wait, I'll check with Georgia. Here. Hi. Hiya. It's me. Well, who'd you expect? <laughs> Hey, look, the fellas in the band are giving David a poker party tonight. I, I might not be home. And then again, I might. <laughs> huh? Okay. All right, honey. Bye. <laughs> well, have fun, fellas. <laughs> cleaner than any soap. Any soap? Yes, any soap. But Tide doesn't stop there, for Tide gets clothes cleaner than any soap, any other suds, any other washing product known. Tide gets clothes cleaner than all of them. T-I-D-E, Tide. It's true. No product known will wash your clothes as clean as Procter & Gamble's Tide. Tide handles prized linens, heavy work clothes, your whole family wash. Tide not only leaves those clothes free from dirt, but removes dingy soap film, too. Yes, Tide has all this cleaning power, yet it's truly safe for all your washable colors. What's more, Tide actually brightens gay prints and pastels, all those soap-dulled colors. And in hardest water, Tide gets sheets, pillowcases, and towels whiter than any other washing product known. Tide keeps them white, too, week after week, never turns them yellow. Yes, Tide gets clothes whiter, brighter, cleaner. No soap, no other suds, no other washing product known will get your clothes as clean as Tide. Thank you, David. Radio's new Phil Harris. <laughs> <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, here are the four nights. They will sing a well-known spiritual, Climbing Up the Mountain. By and by, by and by, I'm gonna lay down this heavy load. I'm climbing up the mountain, children, I didn't come here for to stay. If I never see you again, I'll meet you on a judgment day. Well, brother, I'm climbing up the mountain. Children, I didn't come here for to stay. If I never see you again, I'll meet you on a judgment day. Oh, well, they caught old John in Jerusalem. They put him in a kittle of oil. The angels came from heaven down. They wouldn't let the kittle well, climb up the mountain. Well, children, well, I didn't well, come here well, for to stay. 
If I never see you again, I meet her on a judgment day. Good Lord, I'm climbing up the mountain. Children, I didn't come here for to stay. If I never see you again, I meet her on a judgment day. Oh, well, the hail to my mother. May God thank She held back to me. Oh, well, the last word I heard her say. I meet you on the judgment day. Good Lord, I'm climbing up the mountain. A children, I didn't come here for to stay. My Lord, if I never see you again, I meet you on the judgment day. day. If I never see you again, I'll meet you on the judgment day. Oh, Daniel in the lion's den, he prayed three times a day. The angel looked the lion's jaw, I wonder a mighty day. I found out the mountain, children, I didn't come here for to stay. If I never see you again, I'll meet you on the judgment day. Hallelujah, climbing up the mountain, children, I didn't come here for to stay. If I never see you again, I'll meet you on the judgment day. If I never see you again, I meet you on the judgment day. If I never see you again, I meet you on the judgment day. Procter and Gamble presents the Skelton Television Players in a Western saga entitled. Blood on the Moon Caused by Duel in the Sun. Ooh! Ooh! Oh, come on, horse boy! I know you don't see that brick wall in front of you. Ooh! Well, nice spot for a barbecue pit, isn't it? <laughs> Hey, look, here comes the sheriff, did I? Yeah, well, don't worry. I got my guns on him. Just have a few extra caps ready for me. You better load my big gun with some fresh water, too. Howdy, stranger. Uh, Say, you look a lot like that no-good snake, did I? Only he was more bow-legged. Well, I ain't as bow-legged as I used to be since I taught my horse to hold his breath. <laughs> Can bull eggs be straightened? Sure. I knew a gal that was bow-legged and she bought some of that leg straightener medicine from an Indian. She used too much, though. Now she's knock-kneed. <laughs> she's got legs that talk to each other. One says, you let me buy this time, I'll let you buy them. <laughs> hey, Sheriff, the uh, town looks awful desert. Deserted. Uh... <laughs> See, I live so far out west, we didn't have schools, you know. <laughs> What's wrong? Where is everybody? Well, all the single men folks are hiding. Yeah. We got a character named Vulture Kate who's looking for a husband. Oh. She's got to be hitched for sundown. She's even offering $50,000 for a husband. Says she'll marry anything so long as it wears pants. Sounds like she's aiming at me. <laughs> <laughs> now that we've got the plot set, let's go on. Uh, of course, I, she wouldn't marry me. She couldn't be that desperate. Brother, where four million dollars is concerned, people can do some mighty strange things. Yeah, I read about one fella moving for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that went over with a hush. Huh? <laughs> well, uh, where is this gal now? I think I'll go over and let her take a gander at me. You'll find her over at the Silver Dollar Saloon. Hey, uh, Angus Face, hold my horse for me, will you? <laughs> what for? Sure don't look like he's fixing to move none. <laughs> I don't know where it says that either, brother. <laughs> don't let that critter fool you. I saw him roll his eyes last week. How'd you happen to see him do that? I figured you'd ask that. <laughs> I opened his lids and took a peek. <laughs> Come on, Angus Face. Let's go over to the Silver Dollar Saloon. Now look, Angus Face. I'm going to trick that gal into paying me that 50,000 bucks, and then we'll ride out of town before the wedding. Hey. That's her dead eye. Huh? Uh, that's her dead eye. A real lady, too, ain't she, huh? Look how dainty she holds that big black cigar. <laughs> Howdy, Kate. Hey, bartender. Close that back door. That cat's dragging in stuff again. <laughs> it's me, dead eye. Don't you remember me? Dead eye? Why, you old son of a gun. Oh. What <laughs> sandstorm blew you into town? <laughs> First three rows better move back. <laughs> the way she's talking for the, from the stomach, there's going to be teeth all over this. <laughs> 
you doing around these parts, da die? Well, you know how lonely it gets out on the desert. And a man gets so that he wants to see a human face once in a while. So here you are. Yeah, tell me, you seen any human faces around? <laughs> hey, did I? Hmm? You better get going. It's almost sundown. And there ain't another single man around. Yeah? yeah. Say, dead eye, I'll bet you ain't heard the news yet. I'm a-looking for a husband. Yeah, I know. That's why I come over. Really? Yeah, I want to wish you luck. <laughs> <laughs> I'll need it, dead eye. I'm desperate. I've got to have a husband by sundown tonight or that gold mine that my pa left me won't be mine. Are you sure that mine's any good? Your grandpa left you a coal mine once and all you struck was John L. Lewis. <laughs> Pa's gold mine is loaded. So was your pa. <laughs> I'd give $50,000 to the man who would marry me. $50,000, yeah. huh? Is that the take-home pay? <laughs> But it ain't just right. I hate looking at marriage for the monetary reasons. Yeah. I was just hoping somewhere there might be an honest guy who would like me. Just for me. Well, I like you, gal. Oh, you do, lover boy. <laughs> yeah, but let's not get sickening about it. <laughs> Say what? You just put that 50,000 bucks in my pocket and we'll get hitched tomorrow. Just as I thought. Here, now, put that six shooter You're down, You're only gal. telling me you love me because my pappy died and left me a fortune. Oh, don't be silly. I'll tell you that no matter who left it to you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'd pull this trigger, but it's too close to sundown. Yeah? Sheriff! Yeah? A wedding is going to take place before sundown or else. Get out your book. You're a justice of the peace, ain't you, Sheriff? Hey, now look, gal, now think what you're doing. I want a young gal. I want a gal in the 25 or 30 zone. Well, I'm in the 30 zone. Yeah, but you're doing 50 in the 30 zone, and that's beating. <laughs> Marry me to this sagebrush jockey so I can shoot him in a legal Now, way. wait a minute, gal. Kate, I'd marry you, but just remember one thing. What? You don't want to marry me. I'm a cheat. I'm a bandit. Ooh, I never realized that. Yeah, I'm a bank robber. Marriage is for what you... is not what for what you can get. It's for better or for worse. <laughs> I never realized that. Yeah, besides, you don't want to be married to a guy that's wanted in every state in the Union. No, I sure don't. No. You're wanted in every state in the Union? Every state in the Union but Maine, and they still want Dewey. <laughs> and now David Rose and his Parker and Gamble Orchestra will play an old favorite, Whispering.
It goes without saying that nobody washes clothes for the fun of it. You wash clothes to get them clean. Which explains why Procter & Gamble's Tide is becoming a wash day favorite all over America. Tide gets clothes clean. See, Tide not only leaves clothes free from dirt, it removes dingy soap film too. Yet with all this remarkable cleaning power, Tide is truly safe for all your washable colors. In fact, Tide actually brightens soap dull colors. And in hardest water, Tide gets white things whiter than any other washing product known. Why, even those Tide suds look and feel different. And they billow up amazingly, even in hardest water. You'll see when you try Tide. You'll see why Tide is called the most sensational product in the history of wash day. No soap, no other suds, no other washing product known will get your clothes as clean as Tide. <laughs> Page from the Mean Little Kid's Diary. Have you ever noticed that when a child manages to remember his lines in a Sunday school play, where sometimes his family think that he has the makings of a great star, like Junior, the Mean Little Kid? Junior, is yes. that you? Yes, kiddo. Look, I brought in the weekly advertiser, the neighborhood paper, and look, me picture is on the front page. Oh, let yeah. them see it. Yeah. Oh, yes, and under the picture. It says, um, it says the outstanding performance in the Christmas show was given by Junior, who portrayed a Christmas tree. Oh. This boy's talents were outstanding, and he should go far. And we all hope it will be soon. <laughs> hey, let me see me picture again. Let me see me picture. Oh, look, and I got me little Christmas tree costume on. Look, look, right on the front page. Oh, it's a good picture, too. Oh, my. But where did they ever get that ugly ornament at the top of the tree? That's me face. <laughs> Isn't that good looking? Mother, you know, I've been thinking. Maybe Junior is a child genius. Oh, no. Maybe we should try to get him into radio or motion picture. Or maybe oh, we no. should be different and let the boy have a childhood and decide for himself yeah, what he'd yeah, like to yeah. be. Yeah, let the boy decide. Let oh, the but boy. Mother, it's our duty to help him on the road to success and fame. Well, I'm already on my way to fame. I have been elected the Imperial Potentate of the Skunk Patrol. <laughs> That is the secret scent of the ancient odor of skunks. <laughs> Junior, just what does the skunk patrol stand for? Stands just for about anything. That's why I'm a member. <laughs> Were you really a great actress? Oh, yeah. certainly, if I do say so. I was the toast of the country. I had millions of fans. Yeah. <laughs> I bet you still didn't have enough fans to cover you when you did that dance, though. <laughs> Well, I saw an ad in the morning paper that NBC is holding auditions for television talent. Oh. Maybe you'd like to take Junior down. Oh, no, child, oh, no. you don't understand. No. You don't just get into show business. No. It has to be in your blood. No, I yes, don't feel I like know. Bleeding I know. <laughs> and if you ask me, he's got it. Why? Now, who knows? Maybe if you took him to the audition, they might even find a place for you. Me and them on television? Oh, now that's silly. If she did get on, they'd probably make a wrestle with somebody her own size. <laughs> probably Mike Mazurki. No, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Lorene. I'm in favor of the boy living his own life. Not one I might force him to live. Oh, no, very well. No. If you don't have any confidence in your own grandson, I do. Now, Junior, come with me. No, no. We're going down to NBC Television oh, Studio. Oh, dear. Where's my hat? <laughs> But where are they holding the television auditions? Uh, downstairs, madam. Oh, downstairs. And look, there's a banister. No, oh, boy. Junior. Get off that banister. No! Oh. Junior, when are you ever going to stop doing things like that? Well, I never do it again, believe me, especially in strange places. But believe me, I was going down and met a splinter who was going up. <laughs> See someone later? Yes. Is this where they're holding the auditions? Yes. Well, let well it go. Uh, this is my little boy, and here's one of his most recent reviews. Yes, oh, is this the lad that was in the Christmas show? Yes. I saw that show. Oh, really? Uh, pardon me, Mr. McLeod, but Art Brearley, that kid who was working in the commercial for the Heartburn Chili program, is sick. Uh, what do you want me to do with this commercial? Well, how about Junior? Junior could do it, I'm sure. Oh, no. oh yes, he could handle it. Yes, maybe he could. Uh, get a copy of that commercial. We'll put the kid in rehearsal. I won't do it. I don't want to oh, do it. Oh, yes, you will do I'm it. I'm not going to do it. Now, you let me go. Homer, I'm going to bang me head against the junior. wall. Junior, now, Junior, stop banging your head on that wall. 
The Nicky Niles Trammell's picture hang lopsided. <laughs> nuts. The whole family's nuts. <laughs> nuts. They're all good. Uh, what time will this program be televised? In one hour, so you better get the boy up in his leg. Hey, Nemo, you better call the Shamrock Bar and tell him to strap Grandpa on a stool so he can watch me. <laughs> Now, uh, this is the television studio here. Oh, this is the television studio. Look at all the lights and me without a slingshot. <laughs> stand over here, son, so mm -hmm. Joe Ruttenberg, our cameraman, can see how you look. No, I'm afraid. Oh, now, there's nothing to be afraid of. Madam, uh, will you sit on this chair? And little boy, here, you get on her knee. Oh, there. Bergen <coughs> returned the radio home. early. <laughs> you feel at home now? No, I don't, because when I'm on her knee, I ain't sitting. I'm always bending over. <laughs> Hey, Chief, can I get a sound level on their voices, especially the kid? Yes, uh, here, son, say something. Hmm? Say something. Hello, Mort. <laughs> Junior, now just talk. Oh, uh, hello, ma'am. It's good to see you again. I'm sure we have met before, but where has I met you? Let's see. Have you shot much pool lately? <laughs> Junior! Uh, madam, would you work in the commercial with the boy? Oh, no, I haven't had any stage experience. No, she's none. Could you use my mother? She's had theatrical yeah, experience. Yeah. The How about a granny? I'd be glad to. Well, we'll be televising in five minutes. Uh, here's your part. Oh, now let me see what I'm supposed to say. What do you suppose you say? I'm supposed to say, my, what a healthy little boy. Yeah? Tell me, what do you eat that makes you so healthy? Yeah? Well, then, you Junior, got... you say, right. heartburn chili. Heartburn chili. I is going to have a bowl right now. I'm going to have a bowl right now. Yum, yum. Yum, yum. That's good. That stinks. <laughs> <laughs> everybody. We'll be ready in just a couple of minutes. No. Now, you two sit at this table and try to face the camera as much as possible. Now, don't be nervous. No, no, no. no I, 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 I'm not nervous. You're not nervous, no. huh? Then how come you got your teeth in sideways? <laughs> It's good, it's delicious, it's heartburn chili, and the children will love it. Listen. My, what a healthy little boy. What do you eat that makes you so healthy? Whatever they shove in front of me. Oh, no. <laughs> What did you have for lunch today? I had beer and pretzels. No. <laughs> oh, you had heartburn chili, didn't you? Oh, yes, that's right. I, that's right. I had heartburn chili. You had the beer and pretzels. <laughs> <laughs> Say what you're supposed to say and right. face the television camera. Is the camera on? Yes. Mm. Stop sticking your tongue out. I didn't stick my tongue out. It's just too long for me mouth. Oh. Here, hmm? here, Junior, yes. I know why you're so angry. Why? You haven't had your bowl of heartburn chili today. Here, eat it. I don't want it. But children scream for it. That's because your dying was indigestion. <laughs> Do as you're told, hmm? and I'll give you an ice cream cone. Oh, okay, I'll take just a little bite. Not but too here big you though. are. Yeah. Isn't that good chili? <gasps> Water! Water! <laughs> you give me an internal hot foot. <laughs> Me throat. I'm on fire. Stop I'm on that. fire. Stop that and get up off the floor. Oh, I got a baked Adam's apple. <laughs> You're off the air. Then I'll bet for good, too. You get out of the studio. You can't get away with this. I'll bring suit. The sponsors will bring suit. The network will bring suit. Oh, well, I got a suit already of my own. <laughs> I don't know what to do with you. You've ruined our program. You've set television back ten years. Well, now's your chance to get even. What do you mean? Recommend me for a show on another network than NBC can get even with J.B. Oh, dear. <laughs> Thanks for being with us tonight, and we hope you liked our program well enough to be with us next week. So until next Friday... This is Red Skelton saying thanks for listening, and thanks for buying more and more of that wash day miracle, Tide. Tide's in. Dirt's out. Tide gets clothes cleaner than any soap. T-I-D-E. Tide. Rock and Gamble invites you to join us again with Red Skelton next Friday. Now stay tuned to The Life of Riley, which follows immediately. Red Skelton is heard in this program through the courtesy of Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.